to. Is a defendant smiling in court a normal thing? In your opinion, is the defendant usually found guilty when showing that type of body language? Well, I think a defendant smiling in court is a normal thing. You have to remember that it's very nerve-wracking and you automatically have responses that you really cannot control. So I think if you see someone smiling and they're fidgeting around, it could just very well be nerves. Now, I will say that in the past, I do think that Melly has been more active and more pronounced. Today, he is very serious. I've seen less smiles and certainly there are no antics going on. And as far as the jury is concerned, the jury does look at the defendant at every move and every motion that that defendant makes because they're trying to make a determination as to whether or not the defendant is guilty or innocent. And so I think they are looking at him. It doesn't seem to me, because I'm looking at the faces of all these jurors, we have 15 jurors, we have nine women and six men. They actually seem to be paying more attention to the witness. And they think, you know, at least it seems as though they're thinking that whatever it is that's going on on the defense table is something that might be normal. It doesn't seem as though they're using it against him. So at the end of the day, I don't think that the antics will be used against him. No way to really tell. But right now, he is being very serious. And I think we should point out, uh, in fairness to Melly, a lot of what we saw during the first week of the trial with the, the praying and the kiss, blowing of kisses and all of this stuff, uh, a lot of that happened outside the presence of the jury. It was captured by our camera, but, you know, the jury is not supposed to be watching anything regarding this case. So... They shouldn't have seen any of that. All they should see is what's going on right there in front of them in the courtroom. Our next question comes from Miranda O'Ganier from YouTube. Uh, Linda Kenny Bodden, are they going to revisit the evidence of the shots in the car? Because multiple of those bullet holes would have gone through Bortland and Melly if they was in the car. And that shows that they both got out. Well, that's interesting because I do not know, uh, because I don't have the list, whether the defense has a reconstruction expert, a crime scene reconstruction expert, and whether or not they feel the need to use that or whether or not they feel that they poked enough holes in the cross-examination of the prosecution's expert to say uh, that indeed it, it shows that uh, you know only one of them maybe could have gotten out. But I, I, you know, if I were the defense right now, and I'm a big one for putting on a defense case. I'm not sure I would use a crime scene reconstructionist here. But again, I'd have to see the reports and sometimes you just have to live the case. But you see how close attention our viewers are paying? That's the same type of, of attention and questions in their head the jurors have right now. Mm -hmm. Most certainly. Uh, one thing we should point out, too, uh, that I think is really interesting, and we haven't heard this testimony yet, Linda, uh, but the Christine Bradley, the assistant state uh, attorney, said in her opening that the evidence, the medical examiner is going to testify that Juvie and Sack Chaser uh, were dead when the bullets were fire fired into the vehicle, not from the back seat where they claim they were fired from. So that'll be some interesting testimony uh, when that comes up. Yeah, J, J Cinco exclamation point from YouTube, Bridget, asks, question, when do you think they will start trying to bring in his music into it, and will it have a big impact on what the jury might think? I'm not really sure, Bridget, that they're going to go mm. there. Right. I don't think so either. That's an interesting question. Um, I know that, you know, sometimes the, the state will bring in evidence from a defendant's social media, from their um, music, from their lyrics. Um, he has a, a song right that is called uh, Murder on My Mind. Um, and mm -hmm. so I don't know if the, if the state is going to be bringing that in right now. It's their job to show that he, in fact, was the killer in this particular situation. And so if, if I were the prosecution, I would be focusing on, you know, the fact that he was in the vehicle at the time he was the person who made the shots that came from within the vehicle. Yeah, and I, I hate to bring this up again, but in the opening statement, Christine Bradley said something like about music being artistic expression. We won't be getting into that. But she did talk about social media messages. So 
Uh, maybe the judge didn't let them go there and maybe the prosecution's just saying we're not even going to touch it because bringing in rap music lyrics has been a kind of a controversial thing, bringing this stuff into trials uh, across the country. Uh, Terry, let's uh, get a question over to you now. This is from Jessica Ann from Facebook. Has the prosecutor lost the jury with all of this long testimony? Well, yeah, that's a very good question. I think in the beginning, yes, they had they had witnesses on the stand who went on and on talking about information that really wasn't relevant, just sort of trying to teach the jury what was going on from an evidentiary standpoint. But now they're putting on witnesses who are fairly quick getting up and down. And so I think the jury is paying attention to these witnesses because it's not prolonged. Now, in cross-examination, I do think the defense is doing a really nice job at discussing disputing some of the information, making it seem like they didn't go far enough or they're not doing an analysis or they're not the experts to really talk about the data. It's mostly forensic data and that can be boring, I agree, but I do think this is a very tentative jury and they are paying close attention to everything that's going on on that witness stand. I don't think they're being distracted by anything in that courtroom. They're paying very close attention. All right. Uh, Linda, this next question I'll send over to you. Um, it's, it's actually, we kind of have two questions put together from two different viewers. Uh, Nina Stanick from YouTube, who is from Switzerland, so thanks for tuning in from Switzerland, and uh, Joe Nose from YouTube. Uh, both are asking about Cortland Henry, the co-conspirator who's charged separately in this case and will face trial at a later date in a separate trial. Uh, ask, do you think Cortland will take the stand and snitch on Melly? Uh, is Bortland a state witness in the case? Will he have his own trial? So yes, he's going to have his own trial. I answered part of that, but Linda, the rest to you about, do you think Cortland will take the stand and, and will he snitch? Well, that's a question that we just talked about with this a little bit different bet. Thank you, Nina and Joe. Uh, because the question is, will he snitch now? Remember, he could be a witness, but I would imagine that if he gets on the stand and decides to snitch, right, What's the defense going to do? What did you do? You found God when it was decided that you had to have your own trial in your own death penalty case, and now you want to talk about Y&W Melly? You didn't say that before. You didn't say that before you got a deal, and the deal saves your life, not his, doesn't it? And there you go. The defense really has a lot to work with. So my impression is no, he won't take the stand, even though the prosecution may decide they need him because they're losing the jury. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think Bortland's uh, going to be taking the stand. Uh, I, I just don't. I think it's too risky for the prosecution. Plus, they, they, he's accused of murder. I just don't think it's going to happen. Uh, TT by three from Instagram. Can someone explain the car stealing or car sealing situation? Was it Melly in the rear drivers, Bortland in the rear passenger, and the two victims in front? So, Bridget, uh, can you clear that up for TT by three? Okay, so that's an interesting question. She's asking if they're, if, who was all located in the vehicle and where they were. Um, so I guess I would say from the, we will go back to what the, the camera shows. And I mean, I think that's the clearest indicator of where these, where everyone was. Um, you had where Melly was in the back of the vehicle and the forensics team is stating that that is where the initial shots came from from the back of the vehicle. And that's why they are putting this murder on Melly because they are saying that the shot, initial shot came from the back seat of the vehicle um, that was from where Melly was sitting at. Yeah, so they say they are saying Melly was in the back driver's side and then one victim up front, another victim next to him. Uh, so that's right. why, uh, kind of what they're saying here in this case. Uh, our next question, Terry Austin, uh, at user NQH1, or hi one from YouTube, why doesn't the state seem to have solid evidence so far? Seems a reach to convict a man on such small evidence. So this is somebody who doesn't believe that the case is very strong. Uh, what's, what do you have to say about that? 
Well, this is a circumstantial case, and sometimes it's very difficult to prove a circumstantial case. You don't have a witness who can say, I was there, I saw exactly what happened. So to that extent, it is a weak case. But if they do it correctly, they can put forensics in. I mentioned this before, but they need to make sure they have the phone data. They need to make sure that they have any sort of cameras that might have been outside to view the cars. They need to get the information from the cars to see where the cars went. And so I think if they put all of that forensic data together and they do it well and they analyze it, they can pinpoint what exactly happened. You know, as far as the car, we do have the video of the individuals getting into the car. And what the prosecution is claiming is, yes, you're right, we have Melly in the back, and he's in the back behind the driver. We have Christopher Thomas, who's in the back on the passenger side. And we have Anthony. He is in the front on the passenger side. And they have Henry as the driver. So that is what the prosecution is claiming. And they're going to have to prove that with the forensic evidence that they have. And so far, that's what they're putting in. And I think it's really, I wouldn't say it's a weak case. I would say it's a difficult case. And it's a very interesting case. Uh, it's got a lot of people watching and paying attention. Uh, we are going to take a quick break. Keep the questions coming to us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. We'll be right back. I'm Anjanette Levy, and you're watching Law and Crime.